Welcome. This video is about absolute value inequalities with weird extra stuff. So I've done one on absolute value inequalities. I've done a couple actually. And I've done another one on absolute value inequalities where you get uh, special cases, no solution identity, which probably like four people have seen, I think 25, because I realized it was hidden in the middle of my uh, channel and it wasn't in a playlist, but now it is. So you can check it out if you want to know more about absolute value inequalities that have special cases. These are ones that uh, aren't regular absolute value inequalities in the sense that the absolute value isn't the only thing on the same side of the equation. So let's just get to it, right? So. In this one, I have the absolute value of negative 2 plus 6n, and that's it, plus 4 is less than 24. The deal is, um, you can sort of treat, uh, visually anyway, uh, the absolute value as almost its own variable until you get to the point that it's by itself. Now, if you've seen the absolute value inequality, you know that once you get an absolute value sort of by itself, I'm going to try to pick a color that isn't totally terrible. Um, if you get an absolute value, so say I had 3x plus 5, is less than negative 2. I need to split it into two problems. The first looks exactly like the question except there's no absolute value markings. And the other would be the uh, thing inside the absolute value stays the same, the term inside. Um, because it's absolute, otherwise it's not absolute. But you do need to flip the inequality and change the sign of the uh, the other side just to sort of match it up. Now, in the case that we have now, We've got this extra plus 4 that we need to deal with. But it's really not that difficult. If I gave you x plus 4 is less than 24, you would probably just draw a line maybe, uh, subtract 4 on both sides, and you end up with x is less than 20. Well, what I want you to do uh, in your head is sort of think that I could treat negative 2 plus 6 in the same way, and then I can worry about what to do with it later. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, let me erase this stuff out of the way. So the first step, of course, if you follow along with the way that I've been doing things forever, you want to draw a line here. Then I need to get rid of whatever's outside the absolute value, minus 4. I need to subtract 4 here as well. These cancel out. I end up with 20. And I bring down the absolute value of negative 2 plus 6 in. And this, I didn't divide by negative, so this stays exactly the same. Now I can split it into two problems. So I would do the negative 2 plus 6 in is less than 20 and negative 2 plus 6n is greater than negative 20. And you can just solve these out the way that you would normally do it. So you end up with 6n is less than 22 here. Uh, so n is equal to 3 and 2 thirds, something like that. Not equal to, I'm sorry. Less than because you didn't divide by a negative. On the flip side, I need to divide by 6 here. I did not divide by negative, so I don't have to worry about any of that. So n is greater than negative 3. And then you would just go in and graph it. In this case, it's going to be uh, sort of a barbell situation. So I'd go down to negative 3. And this is the only one I'm going to do all the way out, by the way, and make a circle. i go a little bit, uh, almost to 4, I should say and make a circle there. And they would just barbell sort of in together. That's how that one's set up. Um, but the big deal is you can't split until you get the absolute value by itself. So let's look at another one that adds a little bit uh, different sort of con uh, look to it. Now in this case, um, you might think, well, I can distribute, right? But if you start distributing the 7x plus 7, which is supposed to be quote unquote absolute, is no longer absolute anymore. So it's a sham. And we're trying not to create a sham. So I want you to think of it as 3x is less than 21. Well, you know that to get x by itself, I need to divide by 3. That's what you're going to do here. The deal is, if you divide by a negative, just like you would in the last uh, the 3x scenario, you have to flip the inequality. You do not have to do that here. So uh, 21 divided by 3 is 7. This stays less than. You end up with 7x plus 7 as an absolute value. Now the absolute value is by itself, so I can do the split that I intended to do from the beginning. What you can't do is start doing 3 times 7x and 3 times 7 and then flipping it or something or other or start to flip it in the beginning. Uh, it, sorry, this is supposed to be negative 7. I'm sorry. Um, you can't do this.
You have to wait till the absolute value side itself before you start flipping stuff around. Don't do it in the beginning. Wait until you get a situation that's ready to be uh, split into two problems, and then you can do it. Uh, let's look at another one. In this case, I'm dealing with two things. So this looks very overwhelming in, in many cases. But if you have this, can't see it out there, uh, 4x minus 8 is greater than 52, well, you would probably say add 8. And then you would divide by 4. Same thing here. The only difference is instead of having a um, absolute a variable of x, you have almost a variable of the absolute value of 10p plus 5. Because then we can use it. So add 8 to both sides. You end up with uh, 60 here. Then I bring everything down. Then I can divide by 4. And I get 20, no, 15, not 25. Um, the absolute value of 10p plus 5 comes down. And since I didn't divide by negative, this stays greater than. Now I can do the split. 10p plus 5 is greater than 15, or 10p plus 5 is less than negative 15. And remember, this keeps the 10p plus 5 still the same exact thing, making it absolute. Um, until the very last point where we have to move and find out what the value for p happens to be. Let's look at, I think there's one more that I wanted to talk about. And it's one of those weird ones. Because if you've seen the absolute value inequalities video about uh, special cases, you know that an absolute value, so you end up with an absolute value of uh, x plus 5. And it's supposed to be less than negative 2. Well, an absolute value can never be less than a negative number, because absolute values are positive. So this answer would be no solution. Or, uh, incidentally enough, or in a related fashion, if you have x plus 5 is greater than negative 2, this is always true because absolute values are always greater than negative numbers. So this would be your all real numbers situation. But it can be tricky if you get a question like the one I'm going to do that's in kind of that tealish color at the top. What I'm dealing with here is a situation that looks very much like it's going to be a special case, but it's not. If I had, uh, just to maintain our thought process from before, if I had this, where I change the absolute value for a variable, well, you would say, oh, so I need to get rid of uh, plus 10 here and end up with negative 20, and then I need to divide by negative 10. And because I divided by negative, I need to flip it over. And that kind of thing. Same thing here. So what I'm going to do is add 10 to both sides. I'm actually going to erase this other thing so it's not distracting. If you catch up in the middle of a video or something or the sound goes out, it's kind of annoying to figure out what the heck I was doing. So I do plus 10. Since it's negative 30 and I'm going in the positive direction, this begins uh, becomes negative 20. I bring down my negative 10 times the absolute value of k plus 5. Now, I need to divide by negative 10 here. When I divide by the negative, even if it's at this point, even if it's not in the last step, because this is the last step of this half of it, um, I do need to flip it over. But the big deal here is that negative 20 divided by negative 10 gives you positive 2. And that is a totally uh, approachable problem. It actually is a really simple one once you get there. But it's not a special case at all, because I divided a negative by negative. And when I finally got it whittled down to just the absolute value, it's greater than, or if it was less than, it would still work, uh, a positive number. So it doesn't matter. Make sure you work it all the way out. You can't automatically say, oh, no solution. So um, here I would split it into k plus 5 is greater than 2, and k plus 5 is less than negative 2, and I would subtract 5 on both sides and end up with k is less than negative 7. Remember, I'm not dividing or multiplying here, so the, the idea of what k is in its mind doesn't change, so I don't have to flip anything. I don't change the perspective of k. k is still k from the beginning to the end, uh, and this one would be negative 3. So I'm going to end up with a little bit of a... Uh, they're going in sort of opposite directions. I would just be down further on the old uh, number line. So this, this is 0 here. I'd be down at negative 7 
going this way and negative 3 I'd be going up so anyway that's the uh, the weird ones with absolute values I think sometimes they're sort of confusing and it's really easy to think oh it's a special case assuming you are aware that that happens so if you haven't seen the absolute value special cases thing might want to check it out or somebody else's or whoever I'm not trying to just push my stuff I just thought that I do cover it so at least there's you can go to sort of stay in the same place I think it's in the algebra one topics playlist but uh, hopefully this is helpful and uh, you get something out of it and if you have any other stuff, just send some information to the channel, or if you're one of my students in real life, just talk to me in class or email me.